showing up to show support for the Johnson family and for justice for Kendrick Johnson, who was murdered inside of his high school, just being black. Let's call it what it is. Let's call it what it is because Kendrick was a victim of 158 years of two sets of laws in the state of Georgia. You have the written law and then you got the practice law. You have the law for white folk and you have the law for black folk. We have, and the Johnsons have maintained that Kendrick was murdered. All of the evidence says that Kendrick was murdered. All of the pictures here in front of you, the state of Georgia tells you don't believe your lying eyes because he had no significant injuries. And clearly that is not true. This case is not complicated. Kendrick Johnson was murdered. They have multiple uh, agencies in the uh, state of Georgia to file false uh, official reports. They had an agreement to file these false official reports and they followed through on filing these false official reports. And it continues with their public declarations as recent as this year that they stand by their decision that Kendrick died from a accident. He accidentally got all these injuries that simply don't exist. And just to demonstrate how ridiculous the claim is, when we attempted to have these posters made in Atlanta for this press conference, they wrote us back and said, hey, those pictures are too graphic. We can't subject our employees to these pictures. So if there's no injuries, why is it that local vendors are turning down money for posters? Kendrick was murdered. And the GBI is responsible for the cover-up. The Lowndes County Sheriff's Office is responsible. The school board where he went to school, they're responsible. The district court judge that just dismissed this case and got caught lying on the official record, she is responsible. They are all responsible. And this rally is about justice for Kendrick. It's about past Kendrick Johnsons. It's about current. And it's about would-be future Kendrick Johnsons if somebody doesn't stop it. And that's why we are here. We are here to say enough is enough and we cannot have any more future Kendrick Johnsons. We cannot have any more future cover-ups where the state of Georgia blatantly, they blatantly dismiss legitimate, credible evidence. They don't write about it. They halt the media. They shut everything down. They lie, they cheat, and they steal. There is no truth in them. And scripture teaches us, scripture teaches us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of this dark world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. We know what the truth is. John 16, 13 teaches us when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. So this is the truth. Kendrick Johnson was murdered. He was assaulted. He was serious, se severely beaten. He was hit with a stun gun, right? Then they cut large chunks of flesh out of his back and they sent his body home to his parents looking like that. And we have got to get outraged because this will not stop as long as we are quiet. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out uh, to support Kendrick. Uh, we are here today to demand the appeals court to do the right thing. There is enough evidence before the court as we speak, so they must do the right thing. We have to keep pushing and keep pushing until they do the right thing. We won't stop. We will continue to push forward.
there's some things I want to say, but I guess I hold them today. But as Jonathan says, there are so much evidence to prove Kendrick was murdered. They don't want you to believe what you see. They want they want you to uh, expect to believe the blatant lies that they tell. There was no significant injuries of Kendrick's. I seen Kendrick two days after he was found murdered in his high school. And that is a With me seeing Kendrick that day, two days after he was found, I'll never forget that for the rest of my life. Because what they did to our son, even after his death, is unbelievable. Uh, and then they expect us to believe all of these blatant lies that they tell about our son. They want us to believe the people that we believe have 100% to do with what happened to Kendrick. The officials, the authorities there in Valosa even gave them alibis. They worked so hard to give them alibis. They even say we got pings on their phone. They was X, Y, and Z. We asked for those pings. It's going on 12 years now. They haven't produced them yet. We asked for the cameras of the boys inside their classroom. I said, if y'all are so sure that they was where they say they was, show us on camera. They wanted to tell me, well, we can get you some on a piece of paper. Nah. One of the alleged cover-uppers, he is the superintendent of the school, so he can make a piece of paper say anything. Show us on camera. That hasn't materialized in 12 years. We asked him, about those thumb marks on Kendrick. They want to talk about everything but that. They always talking around the circles. We ask them questions about where all the injuries come from. They want to say that Kendrick walked in this gym to retrieve his shoes. We have Dr. Marianne Gaffney Craft on deposition. She's saying the more Kendrick reached for his shoe, the more the shoe drops. So if a ten if a ten inch a size ten shoe cannot fall in the mat without getting stuck, how can a human body crawl inside? A mat. We have our own deposition saying this. We also have our own deposition saying she sent all his internal organs back. Come to find out he has no internal organs. Even the state of Georgia would not even put in an investigation to what happened to his organs. They're telling us they can't investigate the GBI. Well, the GBIs is the one saying they sent the organs back. So it's two more people who had custody of Kendrick's body. That was the, uh, the transporter and the funeral home. So what happened to Kendrick's organs? They don't want to take a, they don't want to do a thorough investigation until what happened to his organs. We're not just talking about his lungs. We're not just talking about his kidneys. We're talking about every internal organ inside his body from the top of his head to his pelvis. Everything is missing. Even the, even his windpipe, even his tongue. Everything is missing, but they don't want to do a third investigation because they say they can't investigate the GBI. But the GBI is the one who's saying 
we sent all this stuff back. So if the GBI is saying they sent it all back, why does the, the GBI uh, put in a thorough investigation and see what exact happened to his organs? Because they know it's something there. They know it's a big cover up and it's been going on now for going on 12 years. This is a BS we got to stop. We want to thank y'all for coming out and supporting Kendrick and pushing for the truth and pushing for the truth to come out because the truth will prevail. Thank you. All right, good afternoon. Um, I'm Captain Metathos of Israel United in Christ, and we met the Johnsons two weeks ago in Valdosta, Georgia. Um, and Bishop Yawasaw of Israel United in Christ made a vow that we would not turn our back on y'all, and we're showing that today. All right, when you touch one of us, you touch us all. All right. All right. So now I want to introduce the bishops of Israel United in Christ, Bishop Nathaniel and Bishop Yawasaw. Well, all praise to the Most High. The Lord has given us the spirit and the courage to come out and stand with our families, to stand with our brothers and sisters in the community. And the reason why this is done is because it needs to be proclaimed to the planet Earth of the example that the rest of our people in these communities need to see. When they see us come and support these efforts of seeing the, the tragedies that has happened to our people. You have to really, first of all, you have to think about the evil that was done and the endurance of the parents to go through such an ordeal. I think of Mamie Till with, with uh, Emmett Till that was murdered. I think of Rasheem Carter with, Tiff, with Tiffany Carter, his mother, that had to endure those kinds of, uh, th those kinds of injustices. And as well as this, this new case, and there's even further cases which will continue to happen if we ourselves as a community, as a people, do not learn how to organize and come together. When I say come together, I'm talking about in terms of what the Bible says. The Bible in Zephaniah 2 and 1. Can I get that? Read. Come on. Yeah, this is now what we're about to read. This right here pertains to us. And we have to understand that. And the reason why this is important is because we need to understand who we are, and why these things are happening the way they're happening. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together. O nation, not desired. The point to bring out there is that this is, we are a nation that's not desired. Once you understand that you are not desired, then you can begin to understand the reason why we get the disrespect that we get. To tell a parent that your child just died of mysterious circumstances to, to have to even go back to the regime Carter where his head is cut off, the top of his head is cut off. To when you go to uh, Emmett Till, when you when they deal with that with that madness that happened there, it's a complete disrespect for those that love their children. And the reason why I make that point is because we have to understand that what happens to the Johnson family, what happens to the uh, Carter family, what happens to the Timmet, to to the Till family, we feel that. We feel that. And until you all learn that, until you all learn that, this will continue to happen. You have to come together like the Bible says. That's the problem. When we, when, when we make up our minds and come together like that Bible says, if you really want change, the Lord is against these holidays. I say this at every event that I come to. Bishop Nathaniel, as our head bishop, he taught us how to go inside this Bible and show us how to bring these scriptures out to our people. The Lord is against us uh, 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 making him upset, making him mad by turning our back on his commandments and these things continue to happen. If we, can, if we would just do what he said, he said, listen, do not follow the ways of the nations in terms of these holidays. Christmas is not a holiday of God. Thanksgiving is not a holiday of God. Let me just use those two for an example because there's many of them. If you just use those two to demonstrate your solidarity, because we are the people that is not desired, the Bible says come together in unity to keep God's laws. God's laws are in the Bible. Follow those laws. When we do that and, turn and, and, and follow the ways of the Lord that said do not follow these, follow Christmas. Christmas doesn't have anything to do with Christ. 
Thanksgiving has nothing to do with, with God and Christ and Thanksgiving. That's got nothing to do with the Bible. And the Lord don't want us involved in that thing. So when we come out of that and not be giving our hard work dollars to these holidays, then people will say, you know what, these people are serious. But like I've, like I've said before, we'll come out to rallies, we'll be here upset, raw, raw, and all of that, and a few days later we'll forget about this and go right back to the same madness. And then, and then again you get another situation, like Sonia, like, uh, Sonia Massey, and many more will continue. So when is it going to stop, like my brothers were saying back here, when is it going to stop? It stops when you decide. It stops when you decide. When you say, what happened to him happened to me. That's when it stops. Well, as long as you have this me, myself, and I stuff, and let your brothers get slaughtered, and you let your brothers get mutilated and all of that, and you say, well, it has not come to me yet, it will continue. You can knock off 10 million people if you take them out one by one. And that's exactly what's happening. When are you going to stand up? When are you going to come together and do what this Bible says? I want to I want to say this here to the Johnson family. Uh, Mr. Kenneth Johnson, Miss Jacqueline uh, uh, Johnson, and the Johnson family. I admire your courage. I took a lot, and 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 the uh, attorney that's representing them. It takes a lot to stand against all of the lies, to stand against all of the doubt, all of the no, your son did this, your son that. And you have to go and stand up and still the, the, the push for justice every year. I think about that. Every year you have to come out and try to get people to understand what happened to my son, what happened to my family. Every year you have to do that. And it takes, and, and with no support, that takes courage. That takes courage. So I commend you, like I said before. I commend you. And I don't, I don't ever let up. But we're not letting up. I told you that in Valdosta, we're not letting up. Because your son is my son. Your people are my people. And until we realize that, this will continue to happen. So I want to just say that for the record. I defer to Bishop Nathaniel. Can I? Sure. <laughs> okay. Well, again, our condolences to the Johnson family. Like Bishop Yalasop said so eloquently, your son is our son. We all have children, we have, a, we have wives, and we pray for our children every day when they go to school, when, to, just to come back home. Are y'all, y'all are praying people out, I, I know. I'm gonna say something, it's gonna rattle some feathers. You know how to read? Come here. We need to pray, but we need to pray for the right thing. We all say we believe in Jesus, but Christ told us what to pray for. Read this in Luke chapter 18, start at verse 1. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So we ought always to pray and never faint, giving up prayers. Watch this. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God. So in this city... Talking about Atlanta right now. Georgia. Go ahead. Which feared not God, neither regarded men. And there was a widow in that city. The widow represents our people. Our people, the children of Israel in the Bible. That's what the widow represents. Read. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. So she kept asking this man to avenge me of my adversary, my enemy. Enemy and adversary is the same word. And he would not... For a while. But the, the guy wouldn't help her for a long while. But afterward, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, yet because this widow continually prays to me, I will avenge her. I will avenge her. Lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Watch this. Hear what the unjust judge saith. So Jesus Christ said, Do you hear what the unjust judge saith? And shall not God avenge his own elect? And shall not God avenge his own elect? Which cry day and night. Which cry, which pray day and night. Unto him. Unto him. Though he bear long with them, uh -huh. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. He will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, 
Shall he find faith on the earth? Are we praying for vengeance? That's what we've not been doing here in the United States of America. We have not prayed for justice. We have not prayed for vengeance. That is the point. We're praying for peace, love, and prosperity. Jesus Christ said it's time you pray for vengeance. Vengeance on the school system that did this to Kendrick. Vengeance on the court system that did this to Kendrick. Vengeance on the family that did this to Kendrick. It's time we pray for vengeance. I want all y'all to understand that. So I'm going to close it out with that before I go further and get myself in trouble. <laughs> Thank you. Come on. All right, let's, let's, let's give Bishop a round of applause for that. That was powerful. That was powerful. And if Jonathan could come up uh, here with me uh, before we close out, um, we want to put things in perspective. All right, we want to put things in perspective. Uh, it was January 2013. All right. If you could just share with the people today, okay, how old Kendrick was. He was he was a sophomore. How old he was, and how old he should be today, so the people can understand what really took place. Because what they're trying to do is sweep this under the rug. We are not going to allow them to sweep this under the rug anymore. Because imagine if it was your child, would you let it be swept under the rug? You wouldn't. So we not we not gonna do we not gonna do the same thing. All right, Jonathan, you can close us out. Thank you. Okay. So Kendrick Johnson had just celebrated his 17th birthday a few months earlier. And right now he would be 28, getting ready to celebrate his 29th birthday um, in October. The Johnsons have never really had an opportunity to mourn their son properly because they had to immediately go into fight mode, fight mode with this ridiculous story that Kendrick died from an accident. So that's where we are today. And no, none of us are gonna let it go. Everyone here, you know, everyone here is proving that good men don't stand around and allow evil to prosper, right? A, a, a famous, um, I think he's English or American, Sir Edmund Burke said, all it takes for evil to prosper is for good men to do nothing. Well, good men don't do nothing when evil is prospering. They come out like all the brothers of Israel united in Christ. They come out, they support big numbers, not like the National Association for the Always Complaining People or the No Action Network. Am I right? So that's where Kendrick will be 28 going on 29 today. And he should be here. And because he's not here, somebody, a lot of somebody should be in prison. And that hasn't happened either. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> so that, 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 that's all I have to say. And, and where can uh, the people call or contact to get this case reopened? So you can contact the Department of Justice um, in Washington, D.C., you can also contact the U.S. Attorney here in Atlanta. He, his office is at 56, uh, or excuse me, um, what's, the, what's the court in district court? 75 Ted Turner Parkway in, uh, over here in, was it uh, South Atlanta? That is um, where you can reach the U.S. Attorney. It is a brother, but all skin folk ain't kin folk. All right, so at this time, we're going to end today's press conference. If we don't have any additional speakers, thank you all for coming out. All right, and this ain't going to be the last time you hear from us. Shalom.